Hello, hello, hello. How's it going, my guys? I am so excited for today's episode. And you know why? Well, it's number day number 525, which is like, you know, I can't imagine me having come this far. But also, we have two very special guests who's going to tell us about uh, their developing careers in engineering. So we're going to have Danielle Boyer and Vinia Gunashaker, you know, two very, very special guests. Hey, Yaya, what's going on? And, you know, we got some people filling in. We got Sebastian. How's it going, Sebastian? You know, I think this is going to be a really good episode. They're going to come on in about 15 minutes or so. So but before we, you know, before um, they come on and, you know, we start a conversation, I'm just going to go through the Discord and, you know, see if I can answer any quick technical questions before we get into the actual conversation. Because what I think I'm going to do, I'm just going to model um, a simpler mechanism today. And while I do that, you know, the conversation, I want to focus on them. You know, they're the stars here. So I'm not going to be answering um, so much, so many technical questions when they come on, but you know, I can do that before and, you know, we'll check the Discord and all the fun stuff in there. So, uh, yeah, let's get into here. And, of course, I will reiterate, if you want to see any of my uh, social medias, you can find a an exhaustive list on Linktree slash Virtual Flat. And if you want to get into that Discord, you know, I will also provide the link. It's also in the description if you're on mobile, you know, whatever is most convenient to you. Um, but yeah, and when you, um, remember when you join, you know, you get the welcome message, but remember to go to the rules, read the rules and click the little teapot to accept and then you'll get all the channels and then you'll be good to go. You'll be part of the squad. So um, yeah, let's take a look here. So what I see, ooh, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, I think I saw this a little bit. But um, uh, Neredim or LG, uh, LGN DNS, what I've been calling him by his Discord tag. You know, remember the dude that you know we ha we helped out to get his CSWE. Well, he got a, um, an entire article uh, devoted to his success. You know, completely deserved. It's absolutely nuts that you know someone was at such a young age can. Uh, accomplish that. So if you want to see the little article on that, that is on the Discord. Again, huge congratulations to Nared and you know he definitely deserves it. Very talented. Um, but yeah, you know these guys talking about how he made such a rapid ascent to success. And uh, let's see. So we got Joao over here. I this did this extrusion in yellow without merging. Can I open it alone in new file? Yes, that's. You know, you made a multi-body part file, and um, Yaya provides one way. Right-click on the solid bodies folder, click insert into new part. That's one way of doing it. You could also uh, do a command search for save bodies. Um, I practically do that in every, <laughs> basically, mechanism video. So you could also use the save bodies command as an alternative uh, to that. I do like that uh, command very, very much. And virus saying, I don't have a solid bodies folder. Help. Yeah, you'll you'll have that sometimes. That's when you have um, you know standard SolidWorks settings, and um, you have a single uh, a single body in your part file. So st standard SolidWorks settings. If you have a single uh, body single body in your part file, it will hide the solid bodies folder just to kind of reduce the clutter. I prefer to have the solid body folder showing and Yaya uh, very, uh, very efficiently and very clearly gives instructions on how to make the solid bodies folder permanently show. So if you want to see the little, the mini one post guide on that, you know, check, check that out. You know, I think that's very, uh, you know, very helpful to have. All right. Ooh, what do we got here? All right. So we saw this last time. That's, that's Yaya's amazing work. We got Wild Thornberry with this, oh, what appears to be an, um, this amazing uh, automaton of Bulbasaur. That is really, really creative. I love that. That is so, so cool. Oh, man. I'm, um, I don't know about you guys, but, um, you know, I'm a Pokemon fan. You know, I always have been since I was, uh, since I was a little kid. 
think uh, uh, the Emerald version was my first one. So not the very, very first games, but, you know, it's one of the longest-running franchises, so you'll get a lot of kids that are into it throughout the generation, you know. Um, but amazing, amazing stuff. Um, Virus showing off some of his rendering skills here. And it looks like it's like one of those expanding mechanisms. Uh, let's see, I'm not sure if this counts as design, but I made this from scratch. Yeah, it totally counts, dude. Also, not gonna lie, uh, had to render a Fusion 360. My MX150 will take hours to get this done. Yeah, you do what you gotta do, man. You know, um, I think Autodesk does have an amazing offering in Fusion 360, especially with the, the cloud connectivity that, you know, you wanna do renders instead of ha necessitating a really overly powerful graphics card, you can offload it to the cloud and just come back in a few minutes and you have that da done. And um, yeah, we got Duvall here. Man, we're getting quite a few people coming in. Must be in anticipation of our guests. I think that's gonna be, a, it's gonna be a, a great time. You know, fun fact, they're, they're gonna be the first guests on this show. You know, if you look back at all my uh, previous streams, it's just been me. Uh, alone, so this is, you know, I'm gonna be kind of flying with by the seat of my pants, as they say. We're gonna figure stuff out as we go along, and uh, yeah, we'll just have fun. You know, that's the important thing. But um, you know, virus, I really do like the way you uh, rendered this uh, this piece on the top. I think uh, Fusion 360 did a great job with the acrylic uh, rendering. Something that I might add, maybe micro fillets, like very small fillets, just to break some of those edges a little bit, um, might uh, kick up its realism a little bit more. But overall, great job, my dude. You did an awesome, awesome job. Um, ooh, what is this? Design and analysis of a lattice structure. The unit cell is an approximated P, Schwarz P implicit surface. Now, I gotta be honest with you, I don't know exactly what that is. We'll, we'll take a look at this. You know, maybe an Alessio should be my next guest because this seems very, very cool. And, you know, I would love to mo know more about it. But it looks like some kind of computation algorithm to uh, create lattice structures of varying, you know, thicknesses for the intersection and the cross section. You know, here's a structure. That's, that's pretty cool. And looks like with SOLIDWORKS simulation, um, putting load on each of those top four faces and fixing the bottom four faces. Um, we're measuring strain here, so that is the overall movement of the um, uh, of the uh, structure. So uh, basically, where it's red, I would expect to see the maximum compression, and blue is the least amount of change, which makes sense because you know here is the area with the least amount of cross section. And so you'll get the most amount of compression in that area. The, you know, it's got to do more work than, you know, this, which has like all, you know, a huge cross section here. What is this? Amp res. Is this a vibration study? That's very interesting. So it looks like this is showing the, uh, the, uh, basically modal frequencies is what it would assume I would you know I would love to uh, ask Alessio and have him expand on this a little more this is a this is fascinating if you want to see that you know let me know in the chat or in a comment if you're viewing this uh, after the fact you know I think that's a, a very very cool you know, that's a very very cool application of uh, SOLIDWORKS simulation what else wow you guys have been popping off there's so many stuff here yeah, yeah, saying a couple of years ago, I saw a wave mo motion apparatus at school, and for those who know who, who that is, it's a scientific instrument that lets you show transverse waves and longitudinal ones, so in basically in two directions. Um, the bars moving up and down represent the transverse wave, while the L-shaped bars represent the longitudinal one. Wow, that's very clever. I remember returning home that way and rushing to my laptop to model and animate it, and then I used it as a physics project. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. That is really, really incredible. Yeah, just follow the red beads here. So you can see the wave here. But you can also see it like tran the wave transversing through space. So, you know, 
um, many natural phenomena, you know, follow these rules of physics, such as like sound wave, S uh, sound waves or, you know, explosions or, you know, stuff like that. You start from a, a center and the wave propagates out like that. Awesome visualization. Um, amazing automata, I would, I have to say. The revised version of the model and animation. Like, this is very high frame rate. Very impressive. As always, the original models, <laughs> models sucked. I was cringing as I checked out my feature tree. Yeah, so we, you know, my, my original work is, you know, not, not the cleanest thing ever. And even some of my recent stuff is, you know, could be cleaner. Um, the original animation was good, but for some absurd reason, I saved it with a weird 800 by 300 resolution. Well, now you, your uh, animation looks great, so, you know, hats off. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you've shown your, your um, excellent skill with uh, SolidWorks animation yet again. And it's getting pretty close to the time where we'll bring our, our guests over, but I'm going to see if I can answer these questions fully, or if, if I have to do it next time, i got to do it next time, you know. We're uh, rolling with the punches here, but uh, Virus saying, I have a robot on an arena. Ooh, very interesting. And I need to animate the robot picking up an arrow, giving it to a fellow robot, and moving a table aside. Do I do all of this in the animation tab, or is this a little above what SolidWorks was made for? Matrix responding, I'd, I'd say ensure your model is po properly constrained, it's just a matter of adding a bunch of keyframes. Yeah, keyframes, motors as well, can be done, but it might feel finicky. Unless I'm actually evaluating movements purely for show, I export my models to Blender. So, you know, you can get assistance from a different software. Um, something I would recommend, instead of trying to make one huge animation, I would set set aside different motion studies for different events. Like you could uh, make one motion study where the robot picks up the arrow and hands it to the robot and that's it. And then starting from the exact same position, you know, from another motion study, um, you can get that uh, you could get get that arrow and then move it wherever, push the table aside. But you know, breaking it down into bite-sized pieces, I think will, um, definitely help like your quality of life and you know just make it a lot easier to animate you know and especially uh, it'll be overall faster to animate too because if you're animating little sections you just uh, recalculate the same you know two three seconds over and over again until it looks right and then when you're ready to move on you do the next two or three seconds instead of having to wait through a whole 15 second maybe even 20 second animation that can be very painful to do, especially if you don't have a fast computer. But yeah, it can be done. All right, so I think it's getting around time. We bring in our guests, so let's see, see if they're ready. Hang on, my guys. And by the way, if, if this is uh, your first, uh, if this is your first stream you know i invite you to subscribe because i do this uh stream three times a week uh thursday uh tuesday thursdays and saturdays at 7 p.m eastern time though if that's too tough to remember i always recommend you know get into my discord server or follow me on twitter you know i'll always post the uh the notifications you'll get a ping on your phone and yeah you'll be able to join the party when it starts Oh, I guess by by the way, uh, you know, before I bring them in, this is what I'm going to be doing today. So it's a mechanical movement, it's a simple one, but this thing rotates, this bar moves up and down. So that's uh, that's basically all we're, what we're going to do here. So let's see if we can uh, if we can't go ahead and bring our bring bring in our guests. So hold on, do do do. Okay, that's a good sign. And I need to join with computer audio. All right, where did my mouse go? I see you guys. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Hello. Can you hear us all right? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, let me see if I can rearrange my windows here and get you guys here. Okay, so this a, it's a little goofy right now, but we'll fix it right up. 
<laughs> but how how are your how's your days been? Well, it's been it good. Up. It's been good. I just finished a panel um, for the Power to uh, the Girl Conference uh, through Girls Incorporated, and it was so exciting. I got to talk with a young uh, app designer. She's a multimillionaire. Her name's Trisha Prabhu, and it was really cool. Wow. I had a lot of fun. How about you, Vinya? Yeah. Um, I actually had the PSATs yesterday, so that was fun. Um, it was my first time going in person this year because um, to take the PSATs, we actually have to go in person. So it was really fun meeting everyone, um, seeing how much taller they are um, and how short I am. So. Can't, relate. Can't relate. No, this last summer, uh, Vinny and I were working on a project. We were in an NBC special together. Wow. And I hadn't seen her for months and months prior because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And I show up and she's taller than me. She was the last <laughs> student who was shorter. It's not fair at all. Yeah, it was you, a legendary moment. You're, you're, you've been demoted to the bottom of the totem pole in terms of height, but it's okay. We still, we still love you, you know? <laughs> um, my smallness. I think we should give a little bit of an intro about how we know each other. Oh yeah, of course, of course. So, you know, what, what I'll say is, um, you know, while it is these guys first time on my show and actually, you know, you're also my first guest ever. So, you know, thank Yay! you for, thank you for agreeing to come on to this, uh, you know, this sus <laughs> gathering while I try and figure everything out and stuff <laughs> like that. But, um, but, um, it's not actually not my first time uh they've had me on their podcast the hands-on techie talks which um are you still going on with the season about um environmental sustainability so we decided that the entire podcast is focusing on environmental sustainability because vinia and i are both environmental activists and this season is kind of pushing us a lot because it's about plants and growth both of which we don't really know a lot about so we're learning as much as our audience is I think that's I think that's like really really important just to um, uh, just just to I, I think learning with your audience is one of the most fun things you can do and you know as the chat will probably tell you we do we do do a lot of that here. Um, has there been like a favorite episode that you guys have done so far? Oh oh wow that is a hard question. We've done a lot of episodes so far. Twenty three. Wow, oh, that's wow. insane. That's, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it has been really fun um, recording the podcast, though. I'd have to say that my favorite episode of the podcast was the first episode of our new series, like Danielle was talking about, about um, farming, gardening, and plants. Uh, me and Danielle actually took two plant quizzes, and as she said, we don't know much about plants at all. <laughs> yeah. So that was just a bunch of laughs. Um, we both learned a lot, so yeah. We're definitely future engineers, both of us. Uh, just so you all know who, who are tuning in, Vinny is 13 years old, and she is absolutely killing it. Uh, we actually did a panel together um, with um, Aiden Aired. We did it with Lucas Krupe. We did it with... Uh, Rob, of course, Finia and I, and we did it at um, 3D Experience World uh, earlier this year. And it was the first time that Vinia had done a panel. Rob moderated it and she killed it, okay? She did Thank such you. a good job. If I was that well-spoken at 13 years old, you wouldn't even be talking to me right now. I would be Bill Gates, but I'm just saying she <laughs> killed it. I'm really proud of her and the work that she's doing too. Aww, she's thank always you. busy and doing cool stuff. Danielle and Rob are killing it. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll applaud I'll 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 Danielle in particular, but yeah, just so you know, guys, you're looking at, you know, two bright future engineers and, you know, it really warms my heart. Faith in humanity restored when I see, you know, these two on the trajectory that they're going because um, not only are they talented with their with the stuff they do with engineering but they actually care about the issues that affect the very earth that we live on and i think when you put those two together you know that's that's so good <laughs> and i wanted to go a little bit into how you and i met rob but first of all this stream was totally last minute i was like hey rob by the way i'm meeting with vinia at like 7 15 can we hop on the stream tonight and he was like sure because I join the stream all the time. I love what Rob's doing. He's like killing it every single day. 
Um, but yeah, we first met when I was 17 years old and I gave my first keynote at the SolidWorks User Advocacy Day. Yeah. And um, I wasn't prepared at all. I didn't know what I was doing. I showed up, I didn't have slides or anything. I was just like, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna speak. I didn't have experience with it. So it was a very new thing to me. Um, mm. But we had some very interesting adventures. We were building robots. We were doing a lot of cool things and we got to meet the SolidWorks community. Um, Cause I've been using SolidWorks for a long, long, long time now. Um, still lots to learn, which is why Rob is actually my design mentor. But yeah, so we met at the User Advocacy Day in Boston and it was super exciting. I, I love being able to meet other people who are as passionate about design as I am. Um, I use SolidWorks more in a realm of inventing robots and teaching kids with it and less of what's Rob, well, what's Rob doing. Um, but it was interesting because I remember our first dinner that we had together. <laughs> yeah. We were sitting down, I looked at the menu and it, I said, what on earth is Philip Mignon? <laughs> it, will li- it will painfully live with me this day. Because um, in my head, I was like, Philip, Philip, you know? Um, no. <laughs> so I think I'll go down in history for that one there. <laughs> oh, my God. But um, that, that first dinner that we, uh, that we had, like with like the whole group, you know, there was like a, an entire group of like, you know, the younger people in the user advocacy advocacy group. And I guess just to put a little bit of backstory, so like the user advocacy group was like when the then um, uh, basically user advocacy leader at SolidWorks just kind of plucked some of like the superstars from around the SolidWorks community and me for some reason. That's kind of weird. But um, they, just kinda, weird. They, they just kind of plucked all of us and just kind of shoved us in the same room together. And they were like, now talk you know <laughs> and um yeah we just shared our experiences you know danielle like did like a keynote which you know she like knocked that out of the park i was just like and, and here is like you know if you look at my earliest videos on the channel like i am an awkward awkward turtle and you know here's, oh, here's danielle you know just knocking it out it's just, but like and then vinia is like takes that and just like cranks it up to like 14 with like yeah it's like you, know. you go girl <laughs> yeah I, um, public speaking scares the crap out of me <laughs> i remember um i was on main stage last year at 3d experience world right. uh i was i was really scared i loved it but i was so scared because they told me they're like you're not gonna be able to see the audience um oh. i i don't have my glasses on so i was like i'm not gonna be able to see anything I got up there, I can see everybody and I normally can't. So I was like, this is like some superhuman fear. Um, wow. But it was really fun. I, I loved being able to see everyone in person, honestly, for a last time before the pandemic. I miss seeing everyone in person. I mean, Vinny and I, we run our entire podcast virtually. How have you felt being a middle school student entirely online, Vinny? Um, it's been kind of difficult, mostly because um, I'm in eighth grade now, and next year I'm going to high school. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there, um, my school district is just piling on the assignments and stuff. Uh, so it's been kind of difficult, but the podcast and meeting so many new people through the podcast has just rised, wait, what, sorry, has just um, uplifted my mental health so much. And the great thing about that is that Danielle and I have actually had some podcast episodes about mental health and Mm -hmm. talking about that has really, really helped me. So if you want to hear about our mental health and uh, how to uplift yours, it'd be really cool if you could tune in. Oh yeah. Yeah, And it's it's especially meant for kids too. And for young people who are interested in that type of thing. Cause honestly, it is so hard to talk about. I think in the engineering community, especially, I think we kind of have pressure to always be like, this is our work, we know everything, and we're okay always. And that can be a lot of pressure because no one feels that way all the time. There's no way that we know everything, we're always learning, right? And so I think being able to talk about it and have a conversation about it, that is a really positive thing. It can be scary sometimes, and it can feel intimidating to be honest about how you're feeling and what's going on in your life. Um, I know when I go to conferences, a lot of people are really, really mean off the bat and it's kind of scary. 
Yeah. The great thing about the engineering community, though, is that there are so many teachers online and virtually and in person, like Rob. <laughs> yes, he's an educator. He doesn't think he is, but he's 100,000. Yeah, he definitely is. And he's a great one at that. People are learning so much from what you're doing and your channel. And uh, whenever you need it, engineering community has resources for you. Totally agree. And Rob has the coolest resources. Yeah, I remember I him showing um, me his videos for the first time. We were in a, like a shuttle to the Dasso Systems, um, their Boston headquarters. Oh yeah, yeah. And I was blown away. I was like, "Are you are you kidding me?" I'm like, "I don't know how many years it's gonna take me to get to that level." And he's only improved so much since then. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's just been, it, you know, I just been taking it. Uh, you know, one day at a time. And, you know, um, part of what inspired me to do the channel, not only, you know, s you know, start the channel, I, I started because like, I couldn't find SOLIDWORKS content online. It took me forever to figure it out. So I was like, I don't want anyone to have to do that ever again. So <laughs> I started my channel, but you know why I, I expanded even further to not only just SOLIDWORKS specifically, but just, you know, engineering in general is like, um, you know, I bet a lot of you out there that's watching this right now will feel this. It's like a lot of gatekeeping and elitism is present right. in engineering. Like not not only, you know, towards specific groups, but just like towards like, you know, generations as well. It's like, you know, you get a lot of, you're not a real engineer unless you use a slide rule. These newfangled <laughs> calculators are making your life too easy <laughs> and, exactly. and, and stuff like that. Um, it's I, rough. It can, it can be really, really rough sometimes because it's like when you're learning and when you're continuously developing as an engineer, there are so many things you do not know. And for me, I forget things all the time. It's like I know it, but I forget the name of it or whatever. Let's normalize that. It is okay to not remember everything, to need to Google some things, you know, to have a conversation about it. It's okay. It is perfectly yeah. fine. Um, yeah. but I think it can be, you know, intimidating. Yeah. I just saw a question in the chat. That yeah, I was going to point that out to you. Go ahead. Yeah, it says, question for Danielle. Can you talk a bit about ECHR? It's history, challenges you face, etc. So ECHR stands for Every Kid Gets a Robot, and it's a robot that costs less than $20 and goes to kids for free. I invented it when I was 18 years old, which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 20 now. But I invented it when I was 18, and it's gone to tens of thousands of kids. And personally, I've shipped out about 4,800. I think I would have Jeez, that's so much. <laughs> I'm like, how many robots? And I do all for my workshop here. Um, I'm based out of Troy, Michigan, and so is Vinia. We actually connected through First Robotics, which stands for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. Yeah. I can say it without having to like look at my hand. I used to when I did interviews, I was like, for inspiration and recognition of science and tech. But yeah, no, I got it down now. Um, so this is Ecker. This is a fancy Ecker. It's actually made with stainless steel wheels that, that were printed so cool. by um, the company that used to be known as Fisher Unitech, their SOLIDWORKS reseller, and with a thermoplastic chassis by Cam Smith. Um, he is a user group leader, as well as a prominent face in the user group network. His work is so cool. His design is awesome. But yeah, so this is Ecker, and the goal of Ecker is for kids to be able to assemble robots as exp inexpensively as physically possible. Because um, a lot of educational robots are like 500 bucks. Um, I'm not going to say the names of the brands. I know better than that now, but they're super expensive yeah. and are really inaccessible to a lot of kids. Um, for example, I'm indigenous and a lot of my native family are not able to afford these awesome, awesome resources. Well, not these ones, but the other resources. And I, I saw my family experience that. I saw my own little sister very interested in STEM and not be able to find any programs that we could afford. And so I was like, there has to be something different. And uh, it was definitely, it came from a personal drive of the robotics teams that I work with, from my family. And um, it really pushed me to create a solution. Mm -hmm. So in January of 2019, I rolled out Every Kid Gets a Robot. And I also started my nonprofit, The Steam Connection. And I wrote five books, five books then. <laughs> um, yeah, it keeps me busy. Uh, Vinny and I are actually working on a super secret fun project right now. Oh, Ooh, um, but yeah, it was a really interesting journey. And as for, let's look at your actual question. Uh, history. Okay. I talk about the history challenges. 
Challenges right mm -hmm. now, funding and manufacturing. I make them all here in this room. I solder all the motor controllers myself. I hand count every washer out. It's a lot. So that's why I became a student of the Clinton Global Initiative University um, so that they could help me partner up with mentors to be able to get funding and resources to be able to bring my robots to more people. Because I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a finance person. <laughs> I'm not I'm not as much as a business person as I am an engineer. And I, if I could create and design things every single day, I would. But yeah, the goal of Ecker is a simple little dude that kids can access easily, no matter what age they are, no matter where they're from, etc. And it's actually been featured on the 3D Printing Nerd YouTube channel. So check that out. I yeah. assemble it on camera. So if you want to know how to assemble one, check it out. There's more information on my website too. More recently, Rob and I created a robot named 20. And uh, it's really fun because I wanted to create a robot where kids could download everything open source off of my website. And I was like, Rob, I need some help because I have some ideas. And I'm not sure how to execute them. Uh, I was also having some software struggles. So I was like, I need help. Please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm trying to, I'm holding 20 right now. I'm trying to cram LED into its place. Um, but basically the premise is, combining 3D printing with using a cereal box you have at home to make a fun little robot do for kids. That's... And uh, be warned, it's terrifying. I decorated it the scariest I could, not intentionally. <laughs> it was supposed to be a frog. Um, oh my gosh. It doesn't look like a frog. I don't, what can we even say this is? I don't know. But it's a pom pop <laughs> covered cereal box <laughs> and um, we designed it in SolidWorks. Um, it costs less than $22 to make and kids have a lot of fun. But what I needed help with Rob the most was these little dudes right here that replace ball casters. And they're actually inspired by paint rollers. Oh. <laughs> I remember I called Rob one day and I'm like, paint rollers. <laughs> are you talking about? And I'm like, what if we used paint rollers as ball casters? And he's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what if we used, you know, I was very enthusiastic. It yeah. took a while, I had to sketch it and everything. And we were like, okay, we can make this happen. And we designed it together. So it's been really cool. A bunch of kids have downloaded it. And um, it's actually free on my website if you want to go stock our CADs as well as our electrical diagram and, and our soldering guide. So, yeah, it's been really fun. Oh, man. Um, I, uh, yeah, sorry, Vinny, you, you had a thought? Yeah, I just had to add on to Danielle's Edgar project. Um, she actually holds informational classes um, virtually. So um, at the beginning of when I met her, a little afterwards, like a month or two, I actually went to one of her classes where she taught kids how to um, assemble Ecker. And um, before I went there, I was like, oh my God, I'm so scared. Robots are so complicated. Uh, it's gonna be so hard to put together. I'm gonna embarrass myself. But then I went there and the amazing thing that surprised me about Danielle's robots, like Edgar in 20, mm -hmm. are that they are so easy to assemble and so easy to learn things about. There are so many concepts that the robots touch on and they are very, very inspiring and inspirational. And you know what's cool is that uh, Rob actually came and taught at the class that you participated in. Oh, that was, um, that was so good. He, he rolled up in his truck. He drove there from, where was it? North? It, 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 yeah, it was North Jersey, New Jersey. Yeah. It's a, it's he, a, okay, a little I was like, hall. North Carolina? Why is that in my head? But he drove <laughs> there in his big truck. He has a 3D printed creature on his stick shift in his car. He pulls up and he has a, uh, what printer did you have? It was, it was a Mark Forge Onyx Pro. He pulled up with a Mark Forged printer strapped into the back of his car for my class. He showed up, brought the printer out, started teaching. He taught about sustainable design and stuff, brought a ton of cool materials and 3D prints. And I swear the kids loved him a million times more than they did. <laughs> it was not fair. It was, uh, oh no, but it was just so awesome to just see the amount of amazement for just this like simple machine that, it, you know, I think I just made a keychain or something really simple like that, but it was really cool because like, you know, even to people who already know about 3D printing, like it's such a cool printer because you could put, you know, uh, strands of carbon fiber in it and make it extra strong and 
Oh yeah. man, that was that was such a that was such a good time, and you know, taking apart the the like the like the toy the RC cars that was a that was a fun time too. Oh my gosh, honestly, I miss that class having you know classes yeah. in person. Since then, Vinia has been a volunteer at my classes, and um, which is crazy because she's like the students' ages, um, <laughs> and I've been teaching her for a while now, so she got it all down. But it's been so much fun. I mean, I love teaching. Vinia is such a good teacher too. I think the podcast is also a unique way of teaching. Um, but Rob, you've been our most frequent guest. You've been Ooh. on twice at, to talk about things like uh, how sustainable 3D printing and what can we do to ensure that we are not burning the world down mm -hmm. as we do things. <laughs> And uh, also other conversations on like what it means to be an engineer and what it's like being a minority. Some of y'all might not know this, but all of us here, we're all minorities. Mm -hmm. And our experiences in engineering can be difficult just based off of that fact. So having a conversation about it was really, really cool. And we got to talk about all things engineering, which is, you know, fun. Um, but yeah, I'm right now studying electrical engineering and mechanical engineering. I know I said electrical first. I'm sure you're all like, oh, betrayal. <laughs> so I'm studying both. Um, and I'm also taking a break to study neurodevelopmental disabilities. Wow. Which is uh, not my cup of tea. I don't know what's going on. No, I'm kidding. Oh. Um, I, um, I really wanted to learn how to advocate for all my students. And so when the program came up, I was like, you know what, this sounds like a really good opportunity and a good way to learn things that I don't know right now. And I have, I've learned so much. I just remembered that I have homework due tonight <laughs> <laughs> that I have not weird. started. So if anyone on the stream is from the program, don't say anything. <laughs> um, <but> yeah, <laughs> I have book readings, uh, reflections. Uh, every and, single time, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Every single time me and Danielle have recorded a podcast episode, it always ends with, I have homework due tonight and I haven't done it yet. And also, <laughs> yeah. there's like a bunch of- you're exposing yeah, me. I'm exposing you. Yes, I am. And there's like a bunch of um, soda cans in the background. Always, always. Just, <laughs> she drinks know. like 15 of those every day. <laughs> uh, not 15, more like two. No, Times I'm like seven and a half. Yeah, fifteen. I mean, <laughs> Rob and I are huge caffeine people to the point where when we were at 3D Experience World last year together, <laughs> as a gift in a gift bag, he got me a Red Bull. <laughs> yeah. I just remember I was at the convenience store because I was just like, I'm dying and I need mo I need Monster Energy. And like while I was here, I just like I just like texted you. I was like, What's your favorite flavor? And then you're like, This one. I'm like, All right, <laughs> get some of that. And then I like delivered yeah. it to you because you were like, I'm stuck. <laughs> and I'm like, I need help. No, I, I was working hard then. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, Rob, feel free to cat as well and uh, show everyone your process because, you know, that's what everyone is here for. Uh, not to listen to us as much, but to see your cool design process. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I think it's so cool that Rob is like showing all of you his design process. Yeah. Because it is so scary to be vulnerable as an engineer to even show people what you're doing because uh, people will critique it. I don't know if y'all have read his comment section, but it's <laughs> brutal. It's like, why did you design it like that? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> why didn't you design it yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it, it, it can be it can be very interesting. And, you know, that's kind of I was a little bit afraid of that when I was, you know, uh, going forward with the. Uh, you know, with the channel, because it's like, not everyone wants to be watched while they're, while they work. So I just, you know, it's part of like, um, not only educating, but kind of putting myself out there and, uh, ooh, <laughs> did we lose Danielle? Uh, it's just kind of putting myself out there and, um, I'm still here. There's just a, so I'm by myself at my workshop and there's a loud, scary car outside. So uh, I'm hiding. Ooh, I don't, <laughs> I don't like that. Stay Me safe. neither. Yeah. It's like it's like eight p.m. and I'm like, what are you doing here in a work car? Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. Um, but uh, like I was saying, um, yeah, putting yourself out there is is kind of tough. Like you, you know, uh, for for anybody, you know, when you put your work, it's gonna get gonna get critiqued. And you know, part of it is like, you know, having a thick skin. But it's like that's hard to have. You know, at the same time, like I have feelings yeah. too. You know, at the end of the day. But, yeah. um, you know, I, I try my best and, you know, if I can help even one person forward their engineering dream, then it's worth it. 
you know, and I think we, we helped a couple people here. Um, actually, you, uh, Yaya is asking a question for Vinia. What got you into robotics so young? Passion? Family of engineers? This I can relate, lol. <laughs> Um, my mom is actually an engineer. Um, she, she still is an engineer. Wait, sorry. <laughs> um, she used to work at Ford Motor Company. Oh. And the cool thing about Ford Motor Company is that, um, they have a take your child to work day. Um, they're always amazing. And basically it's where, um, parents take their kids to their workplace and, um, teach them about what they do in a day. And so I think the first time I went was in about third grade or something like that. And um, I expected it to be boring because at the time I thought robotics was just for um, nerdy people and things like that, right? Well, Which I mean, you're thing. not wrong. Okay. <laughs> wow, wow, Danielle. <laughs> but um, I went there and it was actually not so much about cars, but more like building things out of marshmallows and toothpicks. <laughs> That's fun. Exactly. And it was. Too. It was an amazing experience and they had leadership classes where we debated about things like which Shrek movie was the best and it was just <laughs> yes. an, yeah, an all amazing day and I think that was the first time I actually saw that engineering was I, well a thing that I could do as like a kid or an adult or as a career so yeah. Yeah that that's that's a really amazing uh, upbringing and um uh, you know, I think Yaya like really hammers home something. It's like, you know, you're pretty likely to at least be, you know, so somewhat interested in like, you know, what your what your parents do. Like, for example, um, I don't know if many of you know this, but uh, I wanted to be a doctor when I graduated uh, when I graduated high school. My dad is a radiologist and I thought that was, uh, you know, pretty cool. You know, looking at like x-rays is like, oh, your bone is very broken. You should probably not stand on that or, or something, you know, but, um, <laughs> but it's like really, really kind of interesting because, you know, my dad is a medical professional, but we use like some of those same skill sets. Like he, he, when you view like MRI scans or x-rays, you have to think in cross sections. And that's what you, this, what you do as an engineer, when you design something, got to think what the, what is a cross section of this thing look like? It's also very attention to detail oriented, you know, as is being a radiologist. Like if you miss a little hairline crack, you know, that could be a serious medical issue down the line. So it's like it's funny that we have like these same skills, but we applied it in so such different ways. I think that's, I think that's kind of cool. I totally agree. And Vinia, how about you share a little bit about your start in CAD mm -hmm. and with the Solvix application? Oh. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people here, you know, are engineers and stuff. So they probably didn't get started with the solid stuff for kids. They probably got started with, um, you know, CAD software, not necessarily kids one. So can we talk a little bit about that? And maybe I think personally that if they have kids, well, they should be using it. But could you yeah, share it? Definitely. Um, when I first um, knew what SolidWorks, I mean, just CAD in general was, I was like, whoa, that sounds very easy. <laughs> it is not. It is definitely not, but it is, I can guarantee this for a fact, it is very, very fun. Um, yeah. I got started <laughs> with um, computer-aided uh, design with SolidWorks Kids. It's actually like a more easier and user-friendly version of like the version uh, Rob is using right now. So uh, if you're just getting started with CAD or you have students or something like that, SolidWorks... A uh, little one. Yep, the little ones. <laughs> SolidWorks app for kids is an amazing resource. Um, there's about, uh, you can paint your designs, you can... There's googly eye stickers, y'all. Yes, there are googly eye stickers. Um, it's just all around fun. Let me see it if is. I can... Apps for kids. It's, it's just swappsforkids, I think, dot com. Oh. SW apps for in my head I say swaps. Swaps for kids. <laughs> swaps for kids. Um in the chat, um mm -hmm. so how when did each of you get to use SolidWorks? So Vinia talked a bit about that. After that, um she and I have been working on different projects using SolidWorks. She's also been teaching herself stuff, which has been really cool. For me, I got started in um actually AutoCAD at a pretty young age. 
My dad is an electrical engineer and he uses AutoCAD 2D from the year 2000, which is when I was born. Uh, <laughs> that's how he taught me how to electrical diagram. And I got started kind of, yeah, I, I wouldn't really call it CADing as much. It was more just learning how to put down lines, learning how to uh, communicate a circuit on paper. And that was a really cool experience. Um, and from there, I also got interested in SolveWorks. But I was homeschooled. I did not have access to any software. So I would go and, around to my friends and I would use SolveWorks on their computers. I would, I would ask questions. I'm like, how do you do this? How do you do this? And um, that's how I first got introduced to SolveWorks was by pastoring my engineering uh, based friends a lot. Uh, Cause my dad doesn't use SolveWorks. He's, he likes the 2000 version and he sticks with the 2000 version. <laughs> Um, but that was a really cool thing because my friends allowed me to be able to learn and to use their laptop and all that stuff. At that point, I only had experience in AutoCAD as well as the Adobe software and different things like that from a, you know, a different type of design standpoint. Um, but when I got to high school and I joined my first robotics team, um, I got to use SolidWorks and I got a license for the very first time of my own. And I just went ham creating things and uh, cooking up cool robots and designs and i knew i did not want to stop uh, i definitely do not cad as much as the everyday uh, engineer a lot of my role is catting with students or catting the same thing over and over again with different groups of students or inventing new robots or new inventions in general um so my role with cad is definitely from an education standpoint as well as an invention standpoint i've invented three educational robots now and I have several big inventions coming along, which I'm super excited about. But yeah, no, my role in CAD has been an interesting journey. Um, and now I'm one of, I'm in the SolidWorks Entrepreneurship Program, which has been a great opportunity to CAD all the time. That's amazing. Exactly. And, and Vinia, yeah. how, how did you get, so, so, uh, so Apps for Kids was your very first run in with, with CAD, right? Yeah. Um, after that, I started using um, the the big big kid apps. Yeah. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Share a little bit about Auto Oscar. Oh yeah. Okay. So Danielle has gotten me into like everything I'm doing right now, and every experience oh. that I've had is just like both of you guys, just you guys. <laughs> but um, I did this competition um, for a summer camp. And it was basically just inventing something, just something that could help in your everyday life and things like that. And um, for, I, a minute, I, for a minute, I didn't recognize it. And then I realized that was through my class. That I taught. <laughs> yep. Yep. I forgot about that. Yep. That was uh, through the Rockwell Automation Challenge. Yeah, that thing. <laughs> I forgot the name of it. But um, I basically came up with a uh, trash can that tr takes out the trash by itself. Um, trash pickup day is Thursday where I live. So, um, and my my family just always forgets to take out the trash. So <laughs> we just have piles of recycling and everything around our garage and stuff. And I thought that an automatic trash picker upper thing would really, really help with that so that you could keep your environment clean and your surroundings clean and your neighborhood just, you know, spot, spot on. Um, so yeah, that was, I named it Auto Oscar. Uh, Oscar the Grouch. Yes, yes, from Elmo. I didn't even, yeah, it was. See, it was I fun. remembered. Uh, yeah, and it's transformed an idea to pick up recyclables off of school floors. And it's been really exciting. Uh, we've advanced. Uh, our use of solid works through that, and it's been exciting. And we plan to roll it out soon, but we are both students, so. <laughs> yeah, a yeah. Lot, lot on your plates, but, uh, you know, that's that's not stopping you. You guys have done some amazing things thus far. You've got a lot of amazing things coming for you soon. Heck yeah. uh, unlike me, I'm just playing with this blob right now in Apps for Kids. Well, the solid well, Apps for Kids is so fun. <laughs> Even, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's so, it's just such a great thing to be able to add the googly eyes and just make crazy things. I usually teach my students how to make robot heads. And Ooh. then from there we like shape different stuff. It's fun. I have a whole wall back here of just creations that my students have made in the SolidWorks app for kids. And Vinia, one of her robots is on the wall too. Um, 
I'm going to look at the chat again. And I saw both mm-hmm. of my parents work in sales. And it's really difficult to explain that mechanical engineering is not just about fixing cars and changing oil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Too. Yes, it is. My family do, does not know what I do. My dad's an electrical engineer, but um, all outside family, they do not know what I do at all. So um, even when I have different articles or things made about my work, I send it to them. They still don't know what's going on. Um, and so they think, because I take time off of college to do other academic works and also to work on my nonprofit. Uh, they see that and they're just like, she's being lazy and is ruining her future. So they have, they don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I wish they did. Um, they mostly give me crap for uh, not having a driver's license. So no, I, they are relentless about it. Even my dad, they're like, you can't drive and it's funny. I'm like, I'm working. Wow. <laughs> I also, in a pandemic, I have nowhere to go. I'm not going anywhere. Um, before I went to take your child to work day, um, when I was in third grade, I thought cars was, engineering was cars. Cars are engineering. That is it. That is the only thing that people in that field work, work in. My dad did cars too, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, another one, oh, another great point that was brought up in the chat. Uh, wow, this is an organic design. It's not only, um, a kid's software. Um, and I think you're talk- talking about SolidWorks Kids. And that's- It's so fun. It's <laughs> yeah, amazing. it's really fun. I'm doing it right now, so. Yeah, it's for anyone who's a beginner in CAD and just feels a bit too overwhelmed with the, um, the software of the big kid stuff. <laughs> big kid stuff, yeah. yeah big kid stuff. Um, yeah, no, I remember when I started using uh, the 3D Experience platform, I went up to the developers and I was like, hey, can I give this to my middle school students? And they're like, eh, it might be a little advanced for them. And I'm like, no, it's not. And they started using it and they're fine. So I don't know. I feel like it's whatever level you're comfortable with or if you just want to have fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like that you can download um, your designs as STLs and you can 3D print them. Yeah, that's, that's cool. really slick. Or is paper cubes, which is great because most of my students don't have 3D printers. Right. Yeah, no, and we're, we're I'd rather print on recycled paper than in plastic. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that that's true. But um, yeah, I just want to echo some points here. It's like I literally created an account while you were, you know, while you guys were like chatting with each other, and yeah. you know, I made this little like slug dude. <laughs> I love him. What's his name? Oh, that's that's a good oh. question. What what's it? Frederick. Frederick. The, the, I don't know. It feels right. Yeah, it does feel right. Do you, do you like my screen name? I made made my. Oh, you can't see it, but I I call myself Surface. Oh, okay. Well, my screen is what it. Okay, I call myself Surface Phil. That's my that's my screen Surface name. Phil. <laughs> well, his yeah. name is Phil. I guess we can yeah. name Phil. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, this is like super 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 amazing stuff. Like you know, you don't get rebuild errors here. It's like you know, I think it's like very. Um, very powerful software because you can like here let me let me like start something and it's just like the software doesn't get in your own way like if you have to make something that you know so, something that even like uh you know elementary school kids or middle school kids can use like it's got to be it's got to be easy to use so it's like if i do that in solidworks it throws a fit it does not like that you know yeah. pushing one surface through another it will get very- does it still crash uh yeah. i have not personally crashed it myself but a few ambitious students <laughs> I, um, I, I guess like someone who puts like 500 eye stickers or something like that or um. yeah no i've had a few students overwork it um mostly because they were on an ipad they zoomed out of their design to the point where they couldn't find it again oh no um and they didn't <laughs> want to find it it was the goal and then they would click a bunch of stuff until it would freeze but that was on them. If you use it properly, that will not happen. <laughs> you can put multiple stuff. You can assemble stuff together. This is so cool. Exactly. It is so cool. This is. I should do a model of the day with this one day. Yes. I really you better. should. I'm holding you to it. <laughs> oh my god! I um I follow Rob on Instagram, and every single day he just makes like these iconic cads. It's just like every single day. It's amazing. It is so cool. Wait, wait, I have my SolidWorks backpack, but in my SolidWorks backpack, I have this little dude that I designed in the SolidWorks app for kids. Oh, look at him. You can't really see him because he is bright white. And I have a lamp on. 
Uh, oh, there you go. Now, he, now we got some shading. I see it. His name is Bluebot because uh, he's blue normally, not usually white. Um, this is when I didn't have blue filament. But look how cute. Aww. This is what I use as an example to teach uh, Vinia's class specifically about uh, design. I'm going to show you her design. Give me yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, so she, so while she pulls that up, you know, let's see what the damage is with the this uh, video I saved out. Let's see, let's see. You know, I did the this little mechanism, so that looks pretty good. So yeah. so at least I I'm done with my obligation for CAD model the day today, which means I could just keep dorking around with apps for kids. You know, this. I'm injuring myself. Uh, I have robots everywhere here. See, the reason why it's up this high on the camera is so that uh, you don't see the mess I've made. Um, I have like a fanny pack with a robot on it. I have just prints everywhere. There's a lot happening. But you give your studio a makeover, Tanya. I did give my studio a makeover. Um, it was my parents' gift to me for when I was in my uh, NBC special. So, yeah. This was done by our student, Neil. It is a drone. The challenge was to build a robot, so he decided to make an aerial robot. And this is the little dude that he made in the SolidWorks app for kids. This is Vinia's. It looks like Eva from Wally. Is it yeah. Eve or Eva? Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's that's Eva, I'm pretty sure from Wally. <laughs> I watched it when I was eight and I remember just crying about it. So yeah. I was like, oh the robot. <laughs> I was way older than eight and I think I cried as well. So. <laughs> I cried every Movie ever so this was done by my student irene it's a bunny robot in the solvers at for kids oh that's so and awesome and this was done by my student jason i added the googly the eyes googly eyes the yes. eyes make everything better so yeah and then these were all done in the app for kids and it's so much fun i i really wish that i had had it as a young child because imagine all the things i'd be designing I would be. I would have invented stuff way, way younger had I had that at my disposal. <laughs> yeah. Can I just talk about something for a second? Yeah, go oh, ahead. Please. The first time I, um, I'm just gonna call it the Big Kid Software from now on because yeah. I don't know what else to call it. Trademark. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. Software. I love that. <laughs> yeah, but the first time I extruded something. I just bounced around my house for 15 minutes. Like that feeling of extruding something for the first time is incomparable. I see people like when they extrude for the first time um, in SolidWorks, they're like, me. Mood. So to, to, you know, echo that, I was in college, you know, when I really started using SolidWorks, I was kind of a late bloomer when it comes to like getting proficient with- That's with honestly bad. not a late bloomer. I think Vinny and I just, do a lot of stuff um i don't think it's a late bloomer at all to be honest i think you're just used to seeing a lot of young people doing things rob but like, I, I think so average. yeah but <laughs> but but I, at any rate i was like 21 when i first started learning uh when i first started learning SolidWorks, and i basically did the same thing when i extruded something it's like to figure out that it's like wow i can build something for basically free you know the, the software costs something but it's like you can make a cube as big as you want, as skinny as you want, and you know, add all these features, add all these bolts, and it, it costs the same as it just doing one thing. And you know, to have like amazing like analysis tools like this, you know, that I'm looking at my little mechanism here, it's like I did this for free-ish, basically. Again, minus cost of the software, but Well, you CAD every day, so it pays off. <laughs> it pays off, yeah, a little little by little but no it is um an intoxicating feeling to just like build Design. something and uh definitely yeah so i totally agree with that yeah and so uh vinnie and i are actually giving a talk on environmental activism at the san antonio parks i think department on uh, saturday so we're oh. going to head out and we're going to actually practice and we're going to let y'all see what else rob is cooking up um and have them talk a bit more about cad but it was lovely chatting with you all if you want us to join again be sure to like stick it in the chat i would be happy to um oh i love this chat it said i'm 32 i started last year it's never too late to start yeah. you are totally right yeah. it is Agreed. never too late to start Definitely. and it's such a good feeling um to be able to design at any point 
Um, I often feel like I'm behind in many things, but the truth is we all have our different paths and we all have our different, you know, timelines for things. And that's such a special thing. Like I feel so much FOMO or fear of missing out, especially like taking time off of uh, ac academia and like college to do other things. And um, I know I'm going to graduate a lot later than my peers are. In fact, some are already graduating now, but it's okay. It is an okay thing. Uh, we all do things differently. And I just have to remind myself of that. Um, that we all have cool stuff going on and we don't need to you know, always feel that FOMO. <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, the San Antonio panel thing is, um, yeah, tomorrow. Oh, no, it's on Saturday. The nope, it's Thursday today. <laughs> yeah, it's on the 7th. I thought it was Friday. <laughs> 11 a.m. Central Eastern Time. Oh, yeah. It's 10 a.m. Eastern. It's Eastern Time? Yeah. Oh, do we really? I don't know. It's 11 a.m. I don't know. It's at 11, 11. 11 Eastern time. And <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. You can join us. It's on our website um, on the panels page. If you want to see what we're up to and watch us chat. Um, it's about uh, specifically um, a girl's perspective in environmental engineering and environmental design. And I'm excited about it. We have to prep though, because we don't know what the questions they are. Uh, that they're asking us. So oh, yeah, we're just preparing for anything. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I've been posting links in the chat to your stuff. I posted the link to uh, your website, the steam, uh, steamconnection.org. Excuse me. It's in, in the oh. chat. Um, you, you, if you want to plug something, now's the time. <laughs> yes. And one other thing, Rob and I are giving a talk in a few days. Oh, actually. that's right. <laughs> uh, we're doing that for the London SolidWorks user group. And wow. we're going to be t talking about what design teaches us. And uh, SolidWorks has been advertising it a lot. Uh, we've seen it all over Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in hearing us talk in a less casual format in a more of a, here's our story, here's our work, here's some of our designs, et cetera, type of format. Yeah, it, it, exactly. You know, I think that's gonna be uh, super fun. You know, this, I think this was an, such an awesome episode. I'd love having both of you here. I think this was a roaring success. And you know, if you're out there in the chat, you wanna see this again, let me know. I will find more people, even if it's these two again, you know, it's so, Fun. We got our CAD done. You know, look, it's doing a thing, not crashing or anything like that. And um, yeah, with that, I think we'll, we'll let these guys go and uh, let them practice for their for their talk. So yeah, if you have any uh, YouTube, if you have any links for me that you want me to put in the description, let me know. I'll do that. But I don't think I'll so. If you're all interested in our work, just check out um, our ads here or for our Instagram. So if you want to follow us, I'm always posting about me making crazy faces while with robots like this. <laughs> so if you're interested in following and seeing that every day, feel free. Vinia also posts about stuff that she's currently up to. Um, and you can look at our website for more info yep. as well and to learn about Rob's involvement in the work that we're doing too. So yeah, it was great um, kind of being on this end of the camera this time because normally I watch your streams as I run. <laughs> yeah. um, so that was really cool. And I'm looking forward to hopefully joining you again soon if y'all want that. So anyways, yep. nice, uh, nice e-meeting you all. Yeah, yep. thanks for having us. Yep, until next time, guys. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Well, you heard it here first, folks. I think that was a really, really awesome conversation. Um, just generally inspiring. You know, the I don't think there's anything in this world that can stop those two from, you know, really changing the world, you know one design at a time it's really really amazing so again want to see more make sure you hit that subscribe button let me know that you liked it i see the renegade coder really really enjoyed that one um but yeah with that we got our cad done and with that i'll see you in two days saturday Bye bye <laughs>